Museums and heritage sites are essential parts of the landscape. For this reason, a thorough consideration on the social importance of placing the museum within a territory and the creation of cultural spots beyond the physical museums is very much needed. The knowledge of the territory is at the base of the sense of belonging and identity of a community. Moreover, it is the starting point for the safeguard and esteem of the local cultural heritage. The community is the first actor involved in these processes, and the active and participated protection of urban heritage is of primary importance. The concept of open-air museum is strictly connected to the idea of a participative approach to the cultural landscape. This type of museum includes historic house museums and archaeological open-air museums. Exhibiting buildings and artifacts outdoors allows to create participative events, like the living history experiences. Another reality which should be highlighted when speaking about the relationship between the cultural institutions and the landscape is the idea of the eco-museum. What is an eco-museum? Let's start to say that the prefix eco does not indicate a naturalistic museum with ecological mark. The eco-museum is instead a free museum in continuous change, not delimited by walls, but permeating all the environment. It is an innovative type of museum. What are the main differences between the more traditional museum and the eco-museum? First, the space. The traditional museum is located within a physical building, while the eco-museum is structured across a more or less large territory. Second, the cultural focus. The traditional museum has the aim of presenting collections of objects and artworks. The eco-museum does not have the collections as the unique focal point, but has instead a global and more complex heritage, representing its physical and cultural features. Third, the audience. The traditional museum is addressed, broadly speaking, to the public visiting it. The eco-museum aims at the entire community in order to make all the citizens aware about their territory. Fourth, the actors. The traditional museum is mostly run by the curator and the museum staff, with sometimes more or less participative strategies to engage and involve the public. The eco-museum is a means to manage the heritage in a totally participative way, involving the community in each phase of the process and functioning as a cooperative of people and resources. Traditional museums and eco-museums should be complementary, as they share the responsibility of managing the heritage, each one according to its role and characteristics. An urban eco-museum has the city as its landmark. This is a quite rare experience. However, it would be an important means to make people aware of the value of urban monuments and places outside the historic city centre. It can be also a means for the improvement of critical areas, like the suburbs of big cities, threatened by the cultural and social degradation. Moreover, thanks to the recovery of historical and cultural roots, an urban eco-museum could strengthen a community's sense of belonging. We should not forget that the cities where we live are like outdoors museums. The public spaces of the cities tell us a story that too often we do not have time to listen to. So try to stop and observe monuments, frescoes, statues, buildings. Look at what surrounds you and leave your cities as wonderful museums where you can learn history, culture, the art of your community. This is a kind of free fruition of culture which can take place daily, spontaneously, but consciously. Let's now briefly touch upon the phenomenon of the street art as a modern way of creating culture within the urban environment. Street art is a phenomenon that originates from the desire to transform some areas, often the suburbs, in attractive places while redeveloping them. This is a type of collective art perceived by the community as strictly tied to its identity. When art spreads pervasively in the city neighborhoods, the citizens are more proud of the place where they live. Their civic consciousness increases as well as their sense of belonging and identity. The street art is a type of art that is totally free, property of the community and contributing to make cities more beautiful, more secure and more respectful. To recap, museums are cultural spaces before being physical spaces. 
So the existence of museums and heritage places outside the physical buildings should be underlined and its potentialities should be investigated. The relationship between cultural institutions, territory and community must be considered in detail in order to make the society always more aware about its heritage and more integrated in its cultural territory. New horizons of cultural communication should be gradually opened. To do so, the concept of cultural places should be enlarged and reach areas outside the physical museums involving the entire community. So remember to observe the places where you live as you are active social participants of it. Experience culture in the territory and enhance its historical and artistic features. Thank you.